go. Aloha, YouTube. This is your boy, Crypto Roots and Everything Currency. This is the Elon Molly Podcast, episode 13. What's good, brother? How you been? What up, man? Episode 13. Yeah, we, we knocking these down, man. I'm telling you. We're going to be Joe Rogan this shit, bro. We're going to be fucking up there bro, pretty soon. Yeah, floating through it's this gonna... market, man. All right, man. So... Yeah, this is we hit a trillion dollar market cap, bro. And trillion this is dollar me. market cap. And this is what I've really as a as a real crypto dude, like from 2017, I'm like, until we hit that trillion, this shit mm-hmm. ain't pop off yet. So yeah, we just me hit, too. We just started the race, in my opinion, bro. Like we just started the race. Like, you know. Yeah, when you I know? when I was like, man, we that last time it was like, okay, Bitcoin had its top, all coins had their top, the all coin market cap, but the overall crypto market cap, that trillion dollars was what the big hype was last time when it when it started falling, you know, like in the last, um, when the bear market started, right as it was starting, everybody, the euphoria was up, everybody was saying, yo, the, the market cap is going to hit one trillion dollars, it's going to hit one trillion dollars. Yeah, and, and it went bloop. Yep, it went bloop. And now it just hit one trillion dollars, and and I think we're the only ones reporting on it. <laughs> oh man, I'm really waiting for DeFi to hit one billion. I mean, and that's that's when we we officially. That's when I'm retired. <laughs> oh, when DeFi, DeFi hits one trillion? trillion? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh bro. When DeFi um, hits a trillion, you got- I'm, yeah, I'm good. I'm sure you, you got so many zombie chains, like not so doing many. shit, not like, yeah, all that money is just going to get like, wait, hold up. Let's go. Let's move to DeFi. Right. So that's what that's the next thing that happens. I was telling people, I'm like, look, you might see some bull crap pumping right now. That's the new money getting in. They're just like, yo, I was, I was laughing today. I don't no offense to anybody who likes this coin, but I was laughing. I was like, dude, Verge is up. Like seventy percent, yeah. like something crazy. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. I, I can't even make any comments about coins that are not on Ethereum at this point. But Bitcoin, I don't know. I knew, I know, uh, I know of Verge. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily know about Verge. I know they tried to do a thing with uh, Pornhub a few yeah. years ago, and that mm-hmm. shit flopped. But yeah, um, so that was their big problem. Like back in the day, it was it was a thing. Like everybody was talking about it because verge hyped up this event to be like yo we got the biggest partnership they pulled it in they pulled the eos yeah in they, cryptocurrency they a, history <laughs> eos did the same thing dude so yeah well just marketing like multi-billion dollar marketing or whatever bro like throwing like fucking burning man type shit like of course like of course you're gonna get people like hyped up but like what what is the what the fuck is Verge supposed to do what just what, cheaper this was, transactions this was like a main this was like a this was like a straight pump bro this was like straight pump it pump it pump it it's gonna be big it's gonna push the market cap past bitcoin it's the biggest and then when it released bro it was like the weirdest Pornhub commercial you ever seen <laughs> and the Whoa. price just went fruit <laughs> I, didn't it another porn site was it Pornhub didn't they was it somebody accepting a, a different type of crypto now just recently I don't, I don't remember well, then, what after, side or... then what was even more crazy about it was like Verge was just the first one so Verge is a privacy coin so I guess that was supposed to be their big thing we're a privacy coin and you can buy Pornhub subscriptions <laughs> you know okay <laughs> but uh, um, the developer the lead developer at Verge was a little little crazy um, he had a crazy history. He was like in prison before and everything. But after that, I think Pornhub came in and just started saying, yo, we, we accept Ethereum. We accept Bitcoin. We accept <laughs> uh, other cryptocurrencies, like random cryptocurrencies, you know? Uh, so I, Yeah, I mean, what's the whole thing is that no one really pays for porn. So it's like good luck trying to have them pay in crypto, like, you know? That was what Anyways, everybody. That's what. Yeah. Well, that's what all the memes said. All the memes were like, "Man, the biggest. You can now pay with Verge for something that nobody pays for." <laughs> yeah, for real. 
Well, before we went on that verge, that yeah, I, yeah, a little uh, big ass tangent, <laughs> big ass tangent right there. Yeah, I'm just saying that's just out. That was I was saying. Um, the market is picking up. That's how you know the market is picking up. When you so see. what you 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 think this is real money? You you think this is gonna last? Honestly, like how? Do you, let's not, not let's not okay. Put, look, let's not it's not gonna there. last. It's not gonna last. But I do think. Maybe the initial pump was led with some artificial things, but I do see that this is there's some real money pouring into the market right now. I do see you that. Know, I'm I'm so used to this shit. Like I can already know that. Like the I'm waiting for the opposite feeling right now. That's all I'm waiting. Oh yeah. The opposite sent- sentiment analysis is like this. Shit, like and I, it's going to happen, and it's going to happen soon. It's just the volatility of everything. So I'm waiting till mm-hmm. people are just not really fucking excited about shit. Right. And yeah. I'm I, I, well, like, that's what I've been we trying in this whole bear market for the last two <laughs> yeah. years. You know what I mean? The psychology. And, so oh. look, the psychology is kind of taken over the people who went through that first bear market. So if you barely got in back when when I got in, maybe. Oh, like, yeah. They're on crack cocaine, bro. Like, you know, they're, they're, on, like, they're on the dope. Like if they you hooked, went through like, you went through 2017. You got back to 2020 and you're like, nah, man, I'm still expecting bear marketness. This can be real money. I know about Tether. I know about this. I know about that. What's going on? Yeah, I mean. You're a little bit more skeptical than the average investor, you know? I'm excited that I'm making money, believe me. But I'm so used to making money, right, that <laughs> I'm not that excited. Like, let me do, like, so I, my head is just a le- lot less emotional and just way more just strategical and analytical, like, you know what I'm saying? And, and I'm, I, I so I, it's not that I'm at all. I, it's just I'm not excited like right. I, like I thought I would be. And I don't know what it is. Maybe just because I can't go spend my Ethereum at Starbucks right now. But, <laughs> you know, like. Maybe it, it's because you got to pay $97,000 for an Ethereum bro, fee right now. <laughs> bro, you don't even That's know. Why. I don't want to. I, I don't want to confess too much about my investing, but. Uh, that liquidation's coming up soon, and a nigga need to <laughs> start paying off his debt. You feel and me? I, I, I can't, I can't get it. I, I can't get one. It's not worth it to try to pay off this debt, um, you know, uh, because this transaction's eating up much of that. So it's all good. I'm not like tripping, but like, you know, I just gotta. I, I should play my cards a little differently um before because i didn't see this happening right i did not see like eat blowing like pat like so it kind of threw off my strategy a bit i'm not gonna uh, lie you I'm actually you see you wasn't watching everything currency <laughs> i was telling see because like i was i was literally letting people know like the the market psychology is taking over as we're entering into bear territory on i mean to bull territory on these charts i won't even call it bull territory i'll just call it uptrend it's easier for us to think of it as uptrend. You know what I mean? If we say bullish, you're like, nah, I don't know, bro. I'm used to, I've been making money the whole bear market. You know, I'm not used to this type, you know, whatever. But when you look at the market and you see this market pumped to a trillion dollars and you got, you know, when you go through coin market cap and you see, you know, Stellar 73, Status 63, 63, 50, 50, 40, 30, 30, 30, 30. And it takes you like, you got to scroll all the way down before you get to a one digit gain in Ethereum, which is 9%, which is still big for Ethereum. It's $200 away from the all time high. We're in bull territory and we got to prepare for that. You know what I mean? Prepare yeah. for up trends. No, I'll I'll be a little bit uh, transparent since people listen to the long podcast. Um, when you when you borrow against the coin, uh, uh, you're you're essentially shorting shorting that coin. Just so everybody's uh, aware. Okay, okay, okay. That's okay. what's going on. You were doing so like so so. See, so, you know, yeah, I was you know borrowing against some coin and making other investments, and I'm like, oh, I'll just pay this off and da 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 da. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I've been doing that consistently and everything, but I did not see. So when you short, so. Essentially, when the price goes up of a coin, it, you're closer to liquidation. Mm-hmm. The higher the, the price goes up, because right, of what right. you, it all depends on your collateral. Yeah. But I am I put down the collateral that I'm borrowing as uh, my supply. So it kind of I'm not necessarily uh, like oh yeah. shit. So I'm putting down ETH, but I'm borrowing ETH yeah. as as some of my collateral. So ETH right. is keeping me afloat yeah, as mm-hmm. the liquidation goes closer. And this this is all just learning how. To play the game right this is not right, all my right. money on report flow right. but learning how to actually 
use debt and learning uh, just the real, not the seriousness of it, but now I've like kind of pushed myself in, in, in a corner now because I'm like, all right, I actually do want the price to eat, eat to go up, but I actually don't. Right, <laughs> like, and right, I'm, so I'm right. in the middle like, <laughs> because it's getting me closer to liquidation, but yeah, yeah. Um, I'm excited. There is my, all my switch. You got to yeah, you got to switch money. on the next, uh, yeah, yeah, switch strategy so, on the next so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so what I, I, I that happened. Yeah, I feel you. I, I, that makes sense. I'll be trans. I'll be transparent in saying I should have took a bit more of my drop money between the one inch and the badger dial and maybe some other that uh, and put it towards paying off my debt sooner. But I thought I had more time. So I took that that airdrop money and just reinvested it and shit. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Right. I, should have t- I had all these index rewards. I'm like, yo, I should have sold off more and paid off my debt sooner because I didn't see this. But this is all me learning. Like, I'm like, okay, okay, this is part of the game. Right, right. Learn it. I'm not liquidated yet. But now I'm trying to go and pay off my debt. And I really, ju- it's just not even feasible for me too. Because like to pay off my debt because this guy yeah man you're like so oh, i gotta I'm, pay off this bill so, but imagine yeah, you know, is like extra yeah, 60 bucks <laughs> yeah man so now i'm just like fucking waiting and it's like i'm checking my my, my liquidation like oh dude i got hopefully in a few more hours i can get this transaction right, right. <laughs> but it, but it's it, it's all good it's just a, it's it's not all my portfolio but i it's it's a it's a learning experience to anyone uh-huh. who's out there who's because you if you're not using debt wisely you're really not taking advantage of DeFi to its extent that's leveraging right. and using leverage and like that shit is, is the next level up and yes it comes with higher risk and i'm actually learning the risk that it comes yeah, from I don't, you yeah, know see, that's for me it's like that's you're taking that next risk level when you start using i mean don't get me wrong taking the next risk level is stepping into the well, game you know what i mean you're it's learning you're learning the, the next, you are learning next, more so. yeah you're stepping into the next stage and you know the risk to reward ratio goes up you know so well yeah th- i and, mean like you learn about just being liquidated and stuff like that rather than just oh the price went down you know what i mean well that's what i'm saying is that i'm i'm letting everybody you know i'm learning because i did not expect it to just go up so fast so soon which mm-hmm. throws my whole strategy right. off a bit but it's all good because obviously, you know, I can bounce back. It's all good. But I'm like, okay, so what am I going to do next time? And what I should have done was took the free money that I got, cashed most of that out to pay off the debt. Right? Right? right. That's what always I should have done. The, always pay yeah. off the debt. That's, that, hey, especially honestly, with the free money. Especially yeah, with the free money. Especially with free money. But my financial advice to anybody and everybody in the world, pay off any debt. You don't want to owe nobody nothing. Unless, I mean, if you're using debt, that makes sense. Like Roots is using debt, you know, in a smart way, unless you're using it. Oh yeah, I got, I got, I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm, like, you you know, know, you made a lot of money with that strategy before, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm (laughs) using it to farm all these other coins. So, so it's um, like, you know, so it's like, and, and I'll be honest, I'll be honest. You guys understand. I make a full-time living from crypto, bro. So um, I actually do borrow money to, to spend in the real world. And that's fine because I can, I always just pay it off when I need to, but like, so you're going to have to take different strategies when you're out there on your own, you ain't got nobody to call and you know what I'm saying? You got this and you got that and you got a flight here. You got this, you got to check out the room. You're going to have to start making moves and you're going to have to get real, real creative with your money without actually having to really sell off your assets. I got something so to doing, say on that. I was going to say it's something that's a little smart. I won't go too deep in it because that'll be giving yeah. too much of the game, but it's like, you can, you know, when you get to that point, it's like, you actually you got enough crypto and you want to do something with it you don't have to sell your crypto exactly bro you know, like you don't want to have exactly. to sell your coins and then be like oh man i sold you know i had to use bitcoin at 20,000 so i sold it and now it's going up to 30 you know or ethereum i had to use ethereum at 200 and now it's gone up to a thousand you know yeah bro i have a few mentees i'm like yo we were we were grinding hard then all of a sudden i hear him from a few months we got back on the mentorship yeah bro i had to sell it all bro i had something come up i had to sell it all and i'm like wait bro you could have brought against it wait huh yeah, bro, you could have brought against it. Right. Damn, man, da, 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 da. And I was like, well, that's what we got to teach you now. Like, you you know, so there's there's a whole different feeling selling off your assets because, mm-hmm. you know, but versus borrowing against them. I could borrow against them and pay for a flight, pay right. for this, pay for my room for a month right. or whatever. And then I, when I get, the whole thing is I get paid in ETH, bro. 
So I get paid in ETH. So people pay me in ETH just to talk to me. So all I know, all I got to do is hustle a few crypto knowledge for in a couple hours or two. And then I just pay off that debt. So you already have the strategy already set up, but you have to have some income. And my income is from the mentorships and courses and I get paid in Ethereum. So yeah, I borrow, I borrow money, but I just go to talk for an hour or two, then go pay back that money. Right. Because I've had the experience and understand how the system works from U.S. to Mexico and from crypto, how to move. That's so all I do is really trade currencies and move money around. That is like what I do. Like if I really were to break it down is I move money around between three different currencies, pesos, U.S. dollars and crypto, various cryptocurrencies. Right. So it's an, it's, just, it's an art at a certain point. But, you know, things come up, man, in real life. And you want to have you want to definitely have some backup plans and mm-hmm. ways to. I just got, uh, you know, they have those monolith cards, but monolith is only for the UK, right? Those debit crypto cards. So I just had to, um, I just got a crypto debit card, Mexican debit card where you put, and so now I'm setting up myself where I buy, I'm bypassing, I shouldn't be saying all this, but bypassing like the American banks because that's what's slowing me down and putting me in tight positions because it takes three or four or five days right, for the shit mm. to go through. Right. Mm-hmm. So now I got me a Mexican crypto debit card where I could just send it on there and then spend that crypto debit card. Right. So now I'm just I'm learning, but I'm learning with my fucking not say life on the bottom, essentially life online. I got people, you know, women, people depending on me now financially. You know what I'm saying? So I really, really, really got to hustle money and I do it on a daily basis. And um, it's it's an art, man. And it's not for everybody. I can't say my lifestyle is for everybody. But like, I'm telling you, if you ever want to learn how to make money and make it soon and make it fast and get creative and not sell your assets, hit me up. Like, you know, because, you know, so, yeah, that's just what I'm saying is that you go into debt. Everyone's got their own reasons. But um, whatever. Here's another tip. I shouldn't be telling all my game, bro. Every time Mm -hmm. I here's here's another tip, though. I'm going to be honest. People listen so when every time I borrow money against myself, against my assets, right, my die, my ETH, every time I borrow money, I take half that money and then I go and reinvest it, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm borrowing money to go spend in real life, but I'm actually take out a chunk of it and I take half of it to invest because I know what I'm investing in is going to make me up from what I'm actually spending. Because what you're spending, you're not going to get back. So that's right. the strategy I do is I borrow and then I take half of what I borrow to go make some other investments. And then I take half of what I borrow to go survive. You know, so that at least the money that I'm borrowing can like other half of it can make up for yield farming and, you know, liquidity fees and all types of shit. So I actually do make up for what I, you know, the the portfolio is balancing out pretty well. Like sometimes I'll be Mm -hmm. looking at my Zapify thinking I'm more in more lost more money. But then I'm like, no, it's kind of weighing out. So these are these are little tips. I won't go on forever. But these are if you're going to borrow money like to, to go for emergency, take half that money. Throw it in the liquidity pool, something like put it in a place to make you more money, right? Because yeah. you may not be able to play, pay off that debt as soon as you did, as soon as you thought you would. So mm-hmm. take half that shit and throw it, put it in a place that'll make you money to make up for what you're spending. That's right, a little right. tip. That's a little right. tip, man. We gotta That's use these debt creative. That's a big tip. That's a bruh. big tip, bro. I got game. this game. That's bruh. game. You gotta be creative Everybody with your say debt. A thank you, you, right there. That's you gotta be creative. I'm telling you, man, it's, it's, it gets scary sometimes, man, trying to move this money around. Uh, and, and the banks is what really fucks it up, man. It makes it even more scary because three to four or five days, man, now you need the money now, man. Like, you know, sometimes you need the right, money now. Right, man, they trip. As a matter of fact, hold on, man. I just talking about literally right when you said banks be fucking up, my bank just sent me an email talking about a special notice. Hold on. I don't need nothing, no scams or nothing coming out of my bank account. Oh, see, yeah, man. See, yeah. Oh, man. So, <laughs> so, so you gotta use banks almost like a, a a money pouch, like where you instead of like you put your you use crypto like a bank, and then use these banks like your little money pouches, that's right? How, that's <laughs> what you got to, because like so the money pouch is like. You know, you can yeah. you can do them quick. Sales yeah, you stuff, yeah, you could do something like that. But um, so yeah, man, you you know, just uh, things come up. But now let's get into it. Here's here's what I want to bring up. Let's do it. 
I don't want to give up too much alpha. So we already did give up that alpha, okay? Because we do give at least some alpha per podcast, right? Yeah. So I, I'm so we're gonna save the next alpha alpha for at least equip my alpha. Um, you know what? Let's talk about Lightning Network, bro. Let's Lightning talk about Network. This Lightning Network. On that's Bitcoin. still a thing. What? Huh? What? That's, who? That's Lightning who? Thing. <laughs> Lightning what? Bruh, bruh. I, I mean, people. Heard nothing about Lightning you, Network you, for a minute. Ex, bruh, I'm telling you, bruh. You, you must be delusional. Some people on CT still think that shit is is what's no. In, in Lightning Network has comp is is so it's it's I can't even get into it. It, it <laughs> sacrifices privacy. You got it. Like it's extra fees. Like it's just such a. I, I don't know, man. Bitcoin should just be like in the museum by now. Like it should be appreciated, like an Egyptian. It should be appreciated for what it is. Like it really should. But between like, the just, fees, just digital yeah. gold it already and quit. Let's move on. You know. You know. It's, I'm it's not. Like, it's like you know. You want to have a couple gold things in your house, maybe some. You know. Whatever. Yeah, some, some plaques gold, on the wall, right? Some jewelry, some, some, you know what I mean? Some yeah. gold plaques. You know, you want to have a little gold investment, and then, you know, you use other monies <laughs> you know yeah. you use other points you use other cryptos so yeah i don't uh, well, I yeah so uh, what's going on with your network though no nah, i mean i just i've just only been hearing how just trash and garbage it is and just how much it sacrifices the whole integrity of bitcoin like you know it's, it's, what's what's crazy is like a lot of people in the in the black crypto community are heavy in the Bitcoin. Are heavy into Lightning Network, and I'm just like, uh, and I'm like, man, I'm, I'm more into Bitcoin being brought to Ethereum. You know, if yeah, we're, the, if we're gonna network do something with, popping off. Yeah, if we're gonna do something with Bitcoin, let's bring that Ethereum. Let's bring that liquidity to Ethereum, and let's really use this Bitcoin in DeFi instead of just having it sitting there. That I, I'm all about that. I, I, I prefer, in fact, yeah, that's what I actually highly recommend. Uh, and, but I'll, to me, I'm only going to do that. I shouldn't be telling too much of my investment. I'm, I'll stop it. Oh, all right. That was, what I, was something I was about to just get into it too, with that whole Bitcoin mm -hmm. on Ethereum. Mm -hmm. but nah, all right. All right. What else is going right. on in this market, man? Um, first sure of all, let's talk. I want to talk next. about this, man. Cause it's, it's, it's really, it's a, it's a virus, man. It's a virus. It's these uh, scam Telegram YouTube oh, hacker comments oh, uh, yes. on 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 our on all investor channels, bro. Yeah, you like it's it's just so nasty. You literally like like I don't know, man. It just ruins the integrity of uh, your your comment section. Like yeah, totally, man. You can't stop it. Man. So irritated. Like the scams. Also, they're getting more creative. Like um, just right now, I just got an email that was supposedly from paypal like they set it up to where look at this is how elaborate they're getting bro because they they're not stupid they know that like hey we're scamming crypto people and crypto people are getting more knowledgeable they're learning about it for they're watching more videos or taking more courses or getting more mentorships from jay and roots you know what i mean they're they're doing stuff so this is what they did they said uh First, I got an email from PayPal saying, congratulations, your $100,000 order went through. I don't know where they got my email from. You know what yeah. I mean? And then they sent me an email from Bank of America saying, hey, here's a notice about your order. I was like, what? They're like, both of them were trying to say, log in now. They just want you to try to log in through their website. First thing I'm looking at the email address, like why would Bank of America be emailing me from like thomas chad one two three four like you know <laughs> and why would paypal be emailing me from you know dog dude at eight six one at hotmail.com like no 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 so don't fall for those scams people they're getting real elaborate they're getting a little elaborate with it all they need is your email to try to pull something off to get you to just slip and, and type of the password you know yeah, I still get those in my Proton now. Hey, it's Proton Mail team. It's in my spam folder. Hey, it's Proton Mail team. We need you to log in. Exactly. <laughs> in my spam folder. Yeah, right? you're like, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> but like new um, people, other like, you know, even like other people who are fairly new or haven't been in that long and there's new scams out there. Just be aware of them. So let's let's talk about front running institutions. 
Because I feel like that's all we average people are doing. We're getting in ahead of, you know, we're getting crypto ahead of these big institutions because they can't, they got the big money. So essentially like you, here's like getting Wi-Fi, you know how VCs want Wi-Fi, all, all these like top, top people want Wi-Fi, but they can't get it because the only place to get it is off the people who are living in their basement and the people part-time jobbers. Like, Cause you know, we own, like I, I see that as front running institutions, like getting the most valuable shit before the big players. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I just think that's that's the general wealth building strategy. So one of the ways you do it is just by being in the right, the right liquidity pools, bro. I keep want to talk about alpha. We need to start charging for these podcasts if we just want to talk <laughs> alpha a bit. We really should. But like there's some strategies. Let me just hint that out. There's some strategies where you can be in the right pools. And like there's a difference between like here's the thing what I like about decentralized exchanges and liquidity pools a lot is that one of the things is you can profit off a hack by being in the right liquidity pool indirectly, right? Yeah. Because these guys are going to dump. They're trying to dump whatever shit coin they have or whatever coin they have or whatever, you know, whatever coin for E. And the only way they're going to do that anonymously and know a KYC is through the, you, you, one of the ways is through Uniswap. So right. the people, there was like a harvest farm hack or whatever. Those people came up like, dude, so even some of the smallest liquidity, liquidity providers made a couple hundred bucks, bro. Like, right. so, and so that's one of the things about it is think about that. So not only do you, can you profit <laughs> off hacks, right? I'm leaking way too much alpha on this one. Um, not only by being in the right polls, I'm not, I'm not, and I'm definitely not going to tell you better uh, pay me some money if you want to know the right polls that I, I'm, <laughs> right? Right. So here's the thing, like normal markets, you're just kind of hypothetically waiting for other people around the world to use, use the, even on, yeah, to use it. Right. right. But there's a difference between being confident mm -hmm. about an, uh, a specific institution or a specific hack or like, check this out or decentralized money robot. Right. So you got some of these vaults and these strategies. If you actually really looked at the strategy and studied the strategy of some of these vaults, I'm not going to tell you which ones they actually use a certain Uniswap pool. So right. you're saying that the money, bro money robot that's taken hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people's dollars is to program is programmed to actually use this particular Uniswap pool. Uh, I'm in that fucking pool because now I know I can rely on that type of income. I don't know how much, but I, it's more certain than just a bunch of random people using the pool. No, right. I, if I know that oh, like an institution's going to be using this pool or a money robot or a vault, I'm like, yo, that's, that's steady money coming right. in. I, and need you, you use a, really, I need a piece you, of that pool right there. Exactly, bro. Like, and that's to me, that's like almost real estate at that point where you already know the money's coming in because it's actually written in the smart contract, part of the code to sell and swap it for ETH on Uniswap. Well, right. fucking be in that fucking pool, bro. You know? Right. So I feel like this is front running institutions. It's like, by the time these guys catch on, the only place they can get Wi-Fi is through the Wi-Fi ETH pool, essentially uh, on Uniswap. That'll probably be the highest liquidity with the lowest slippage type shit. Like, so if you could, if you actually understood this game a little deeper, you would actually know good places to park your money. Like right. before everybody else, like you know, parks their mm -hmm. money there, and the liquidity just skyrockets, right? And so yeah. being yeah, being first before everybody else is 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 a big thing, especially when it comes to stuff like that, liquidity pools, even just something as simple as like just for like farming, you know. You gotta you know get the into, game, bro. You gotta get into those farming protocols early and make you, sure, I mean, make sure there ain't no rug pull, make sure you don't get slipped. You, 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 you gotta, gotta understand what you gotta understand what profit sharing is, right? And auto compounding. Most people don't understand that these APYs are kind of like actually APRs, but you because you actually you, for you gotta auto compound it. And things that what I just learned about farmers, they actually auto compound it. Certain places actually take your money and then go and reinvest it. Others just give you money and yeah. then you actually have to pull it out. And oh, then that was put my favorite thing there. about farm because they had an auto compounder. So it was like over time. You that you, shit, click, yeah. you see you watching it, you seeing it going faster, you're like, oh, it's moving faster because every little, you know, whatever it is, every little penny, you know, is getting invested back yeah. in auto automatically without you having to pay e fees. Uh, yeah, you know, dude. without you having to move anything around or do anything, and you can just, you know, have fun. <laughs> so it really, it really does pay to know this game deeper on a deeper level. It really does pay like 
um, you know, because yeah, like that's where the money's at. Like people want to know, like, how do you make the money? Like, how do you, how do you make the money? Like, well, well right you know, now, what? we're feel- going into a simpler time. We're going into look on the back end. You can front run institutions on the front end. You can front one institutions. You know what I mean? You can front one institutions just by saying, look, they're going to all want ETH. I don't care what people are telling me. They're going to want ETH. You know what I mean? Like, stop playing with me. It's $1,200 right now. They're going to want ETH. Bitcoin is $30,000. they are going to want <laughs> and, and, and on the opposite side, they're going to dump ETH, bro. They're, they're going to dump, dump ETH. But you got to have, you got to have sellers and buyers, you know, for both, for both things to go down, you know, at the end so, of the day. <clears throat> so, so I think we actually going to have to make a whole another podcast where uh, it's a paid subscription. So I can actually kind of flow because I, I do a lot of, I put a lot of my time, a lot of my money and I, I do look out for you guys uh, by sharing value. But sometimes I just like to flow and just like, just kind of just leak it all. Like, you know, exactly. but I feel like you guys should be, you know, <laughs> you guys should be compensating for uh, sharing value with us because of that, because I can, I can help you out, man. Like I, like, I can't tell you how much I can get, you can get paid, but with some of the advice that me and um, um, everything currency got, man, like, you and your whole family could just be sitting straight off the, our experience. You know what I'm saying? And like, mm-hmm. and that's, that's what the game's about, you know? So uh, if you guys are interested, let us know, but we should that's probably really do a paid, cool. a paid version of this. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We can do what we can do is we can do a, uh, on YouTube. Now we can add, we can have a members section and people who want to become members, you know, they could just be a member and then they can get, access to like the exclusive parts of the conversation okay okay all right yeah i want to i want i need to get the value exchange because i spent a lot of fucking gas freaking all the shit out you know what i'm saying so i want my gas back <laughs> you said i want my gas back you owe me some gas i, I experimented uh, for y'all was the guinea no, it's just value yeah i mean it's just yeah, value yeah, that's it, what i'm saying that's, that's yeah you know. but you know keep it real i'm keeping it real i'm not gonna lie why i want why i want your money Right. Yeah. And I'm not going to feel like, yeah, no, I, and, no, I, I encourage I, other people too, yeah. like your friends, <laughs> not, you know, maybe not your best friend, but it's like that, that person from high school who's been, you know, laughing at all your posts about Bitcoin for two years that are, that's asking you for help right now, you know, don't be ashamed to go ahead and say, yo, look, this is my referral link, bro. Or this is at the very least, here's my referral link or, you know, if you need me to come to your house and show you, you gotta, I charge people for my time, you know, like I, it's, you know. Yeah, there's different ways you can do it. You can show somebody how to get Bitcoin, but let them know that it's going to cost them Bitcoin. Like I, 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 I keep it so real. But the first lesson anybody should ever learn is to exchange value. You shouldn't be, even right. some of my best friends growing up in high school wanted me to just ask him, why am I charging them? Why am I trying to it's like, because you wouldn't even appreciate it. If you got it for free, you wouldn't value exactly. the information exactly. if you didn't pay for it. Exactly. And he's just shut up. He was absolutely, he didn't even say nothing. That would be right. So you wouldn't value it if I just took the time to just tell you this for free. You, it wouldn't mean it. And I've done that. And those people. Look at people who go people. to college. People who go to college, they say, oh, I pay, I'm paying for this shit. So I'm going to pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like how many people have you heard say that? You know what I mean? Man. Who, Exactly. You know, they went to college and they were paying for it. They decided that hey, I, it's worth it for me to get straight A's now. Yeah, man, I'm always in exchange for value. Like, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. Like, I'm, I don't mind. Even with women, women are are, are more. Uh, I even say understanding of exchanging value. Hey, if I do this for you, can you do this for me? Right. Can hey, if I do this for you, it doesn't even matter. Like, hey, if I take out the trash, can you do this? Like, women are like, yeah, that, that that's cool. Men are like, why? Why do I gotta do this? I thought we homies. I thought we homies. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you know, yeah. you know. Um, but anyways, let's get into it. So here's the here's the here's the, here's the Las Vegas, bro. Vegas just hit the scene. People don't know what Vegas is. And cri- I'm talking. I'm not just talking about cryptocurrency. People think that's Vegas. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about DeFi because people think that's Vegas. No, I'm talking about Vegas. Ching, ching, ching. The biggest fucking game theory. I'm telling you, I'm not a gambler. Believe me. Listen, real crypto is not a gambler. This shit is inches away from gambling 
And that's why I'm fucking with it because I mean, <laughs> I, I, this shit is this shit is. Well, an inch don't away tell me you messing with the casinos, man. Those crypto. No, things. not well. I want, <laughs> algorithmic stable coins, bro. Okay. Algorithmic yeah, stable yeah, coins. Yeah, yeah. So Empty was, said dollar. Those, dynamic man. said dollar. Bro, I'm in this shit. I'm 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 hooked. <laughs> I'm I'm hooked to de- dude. I took me a while to wrap my head around this, bro like three or four days straight in the discord trying to just figure this shit out and read a medium and watch it but i think i got most of it done it's called dynamic set dollar bro um these are algorithmic stable coins this shit is the new hot shit bro and this you want to talk about money printer go burr well money printer go burr for you is bad money printer go burr for me is really good right <laughs> so let, let's 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 be break it down so these whole ESDs and dynamic set dollars and algorithmic stable coins. So you got like I'm breaking down game, all right? So here's the thing: there's there's different stages of stable coins, as we can right. see that it's an evolution. Yeah. The yeah. first one, the first stage was USD backed stable coins. Right. Okay. US it was supposedly tethers USD. That was that was the USD back. But obviously regulations, laws, all wah, types wah, of shit wah. is what. Yeah. Is where we had to move on. Now, then you had collateralized back stable coins, such as Dai and who knows what else is out there that they were backed by collateral or even over collateralized, right? But that came with a lot of limitations because even most of the collateral uh, that's backing Dai is actually centralized stable coins, which is a fucking threat as well, right? right? right. You got a decentralized yeah. coin, but most of the collateral was actually fucking centralized. I was so, saying that I was asking people, you know. Yeah. So now we have this thing. Because here's the thing, though, we're, what, what, what we're trying to do is find a way to have a valuable dollar in a decentralized way. That, so we have right. to get creative. Right. We have to. So what we need, what we're really looking for is that one dollar and value to match it. And if we and if you can create one dollar and actually it'd be valuable, then who says you can't just create a bunch more money? That's the whole catch, though. Right. If you could actually make one dollar decentralized and have a value, then shit, you could be the fucking Federal Reserve. So that's where we get into fucking uh, algorithmic stable coins. Mm -hmm. Now, I won't get you have to hit us up for the private. We're going to do a private. We're going to re-record this and we're going to break down the whole game. um, Just me and Jay. Um, But essentially what it does is you can buy dollars on discount. This is the dope shit, bro. You can buy (laughs) dollars. Okay. well, the way it works is. It's, it's like Ample, but with no rebase, okay? That's the catch. It's okay. like Ample, but with no rebase. So you don't get more or less that show up in your wallet. Essentially, what it, it uses game theory to the maximum. So the way it does is it, uh, money printer goes burr if it's over a dollar just fucking millions, multi-millions to put the market, right? So here's the, and then essentially it causes everybody to dump to bring the price back down. So, right, we use a game theory market mechanism on the top. Same thing on the bottom, right? The whole thing on the bottom though, instead of uh, like rebase, it takes your money out. What essentially do is that it discounts, you can buy discounted dollars. This is what I like. Uh-huh. So if, if dynamic <laughs> said dollars is like 75 cents, what you can do is burn your D, D, burn your dynamic set dollar. You burn your dollars. You just throw one in the trash and you get coupons. The coupons represent, uh, you know, you so you can if it, if it's seventy five cents, you will take your actual real dollars and then buy like a forty five percent premium, right? So you'll get like so you'll have forty dollars and then you'll end up getting maybe sixty two, right? And in coupons. So if it ever does hit a dollar, you get $62 worth of coupons. You see how that works? Mm -hmm. So you're incentivizing people to buy dollars cheap. And if people are buying, if people are burning their money, then less is in the market. And and so now you got everybody buying discounted dollars and burning their real money. So it reduces the supply to push it back up to a dollar. Once it hits a dollar, everybody cashes out. Right. And gets their fucking premium on. So that's how it's supposed to work. But it's all types of games. But the thing is, they have a, a bonded to the Dow and then they have a liquidity provider. So we, I won't go into detail about those. But what happens is, is, is that when money printer go burr, like millions and millions of dollars every two hours, um, that money doesn't get distributed to everybody holding DSD. 
like it does Ample. It only gets distributed to people who are bonded to the Dow and liquidity providers. Mm -hmm. So that money just doesn't go to everybody. It only goes to a very small group of people that are actually like invested into the protocol. So that's the benefit is that you, in an auto compounds, man, I'm telling you, like the way this shit works is so lucrative on the upside and the downside. That's Mm -hmm. the catch. You can make so much money if it's below a dollar by buying discounted dollars and you can make so much more money if it's over a dollar by getting all that printed money back to you, all that excess money, all of it. And it, it just goes right back to the people who are fucking staked their fucking DSD. And so that's the catch. That's why it's so lucrative. And it's always, it's a very, very deep, intricate game theory. People, you know, it's like, what are other people going to do versus what I'm going to do? How's it going to affect my bags? And, but the coupons expire after 30 days, though. That's the catch. Uh, okay, so you, okay. you, that's the catch. So you could spend all your money. You have to burn all your money, all your dollars to get these coupons. But if it doesn't hit a dollar in 30 days, pff, done. There you go. You lost all that bread. You lost all of it. So it's high. That's why I said it's like the Vegas. It's like the casino. Like yeah. it's fucking gambling. It's high. It's <laughs> high risk, bro. You got to play this game. High reward in there. But the whole purpose is it to be a dollar so that it can be used as collateral and actually, so it's an, it's a financial experiment. All these are financial, right. social, uh, social financial experiments, ESD and DSD. So, and, uh, but watch out because a lot of scams coming out, but I fuck with DSD, dynamic set dollar. Mm-hmm. So man, you gotta play this game. You gotta play it. It's worth it to learn, you know, it's worth it. But yeah. um, yeah. Oh, Bitcoin just hit 27 thousand thirty damn hold on can't 27 say this man thirty seven thousand one hundred dollars right now new on top Bro, of that i'm looking at it i'm looking at it right now oh man <sighs> So what's what's happening? How are we gonna celebrate, bro? How are we gonna celebrate, <laughs> man? What are we gonna do? Hey, we got nah, yeah, man. So you know what? We actually stay calm. We actually wait for this shit to you know. I don't know how people should play these moves. Honestly, like right now, I feel like you know, because the price of Bitcoin is pumping it, and it, let's not forget, man. We know what happens next. Our precious little altcoins, our lovely DeFi, our beautiful Ethereum starts starts going next. You know, it's already yeah. kind of happening. Bitcoin dominance is, you know, it took a little dip. It went back up. So you you, th- you think Yearn is ever going to flip uh, Bitcoin again? In price? Yeah, Yearn Finance. Hold on, let me look at Yearn. Oh, you think like, is it going to, because what did Yearn get up yeah. to? 43,000. You think it'll flip it, like just pass Bitcoin in price? Oh, yeah, because it doesn't take, it takes a lot less money for Yearn to flip Bitcoin, right? But still, it would need to actually have very high value, like use case, like, you know what I'm saying? Do you think Yearn is capable? I mean, of course, like, I don't know. In my opinion, we're hitting, we're hitting FOMO again, bro. Like, we really are. We're hitting to, we're hitting to the point to where, let check this out. People are not even going to know what the hell DeFi means. People are going to say, "What uh, roots? What is DeFi even? What is it?" Yeah, you know I mean, we're hitting that stage again of this market. You know, so we're getting new people coming into this market right now. And I guess I'm pretty ignorant about that. Yeah, I mean, honest. that's that's where I had to pull myself out because we were so deep in the DeFi. We got involved in like anybody who was running through DeFi summer. And who knows about rug pulls? They're yeah. they're becoming like so deep into the game that you got to take a step back and look at it as a whole game. You got to look at Bitcoin again. You got to look at light. Like I had to look at Litecoin again. You know what I mean? I was like, I thought Litecoin. Nah. Was, I thought Litecoin nah. was dead. Yeah. You know what and I'm that's, saying? But here's the and thing that's what you, that's where the psychology gets a hold of you. You can't be biased if you're here to make money. Now, just making money became easier because we dove into DeFi when when everything everything else was sucked yeah i mean everything else sucked we owned a bunch of shit coins in the past a bunch of those uh ghost chains and and stuff like that and and that sucked but the hype is turning around to where trust me i got people who were just like yo you probably feel stupid now don't you messing with this cryptocurrency stuff and i was like yo DeFi and yield aggregator and they were like bro shut up you know what I mean? And now they're hitting me up like, hey, uh, do you think this cryptocurrency, um, 
what's that chain link i'm looking at at coinbase and i see a chain link do you think chain link is going to reach uh thirty thousand dollars like bitcoin did and i'm like oh wait hold on we're getting into noob territory again noob noob yeah. territory yeah. yeah and and you got i appreciate you know? I, yeah i definitely appreciate your perspective on the game and that's why we we definitely need you on the I need you on the podcast. Yeah. But I'm gonna be honest, man. My heart, my heart. I have some scars on me, bro, from this crypto game. Yeah, nah, man. You know? you off, I got, man. I, I got. Don't some fall scars off some, on... Don't fall off the bike and never pick <laughs> it up again. And, you know and, 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 and believe me, I'm 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 very social when it comes to my personal mentorships. But outside of that, you know, I'm just on some 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 raw rugged hardcore on my own deep in the DeFi. like i just right. i need it you know like but right. sometimes we need we need those people who are like yo that dude's that's what he does and he, yeah. he just does that right. <laughs> you know yeah. um but that's why we need uh, your contrast on here um because yeah, yeah. because you, 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 you to take a look at the yeah. overall game because like yeah mm-hmm. DeFi is dope don't get me wrong but everything else still pops like centralized like what i'm saying is this decentralized is 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 the future right but for the next 20 years or as long as you know jay and crypto roots is going to be alive we're still going to have centralized entities doing certain things even if it's just a centralized company building the central decentralized protocol and they're going to create a DAO later you know and, and hand over the keys and everything but we're in that process still where we still need somebody at the top saying no 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 like that's a sorry idea you know that's you know somebody you know at this point in time we still need that you know yeah. so, so it's just like it it, it you got to take a, a look back and say i came into crypto to make money and there's money all around there's money all around DeFi. so if my DeFi coins are taking a nap right now because they're just chilling i'm not even tripping Protocols are being updated. Uh, GitHubs are popping off like crazy. Communities are being built. Marketing is getting worked on. But other things are also popping off. You know what I mean? People are saying, hey, look, um, I want to send some crypto because it's my first time using crypto and it's cheaper to send Litecoin. Just as simple as that. I'll, so I'll buy that. To them, that's what it is. I'll buy that. For us, we're like, yo, I've seen Litecoin at like, you know, 52 cents i'm not gonna buy it at <laughs> 100 and some bucks you know but um that's where the whole psychology of of the game gets to us i think a lot of people who've been here for a while are in that kind of disbelief stage of like damn i really do have to back up and and look at some of these coins that i thought were dead like because people gonna love them you know and I think Dogecoin just gives us a good example of that every single bull run. Yeah, I mean, there's there's no doubt that Dogecoin is is one of the best indicators for uh, of all season. Like, yeah, you know, Dogecoin, like, you know, because like, you can run. when you say Dogecoin starts pumping, you say, up oh, the coins with, you know, development has been been chilled for a minute, you know. And, well, I, I think it's the personality and type of investors that makes Dogecoin pop the way it does. It's like, I just think it's such a, it's such a good, I, I'm, I'm no longer invested in Dogecoin, mm-hmm. but you now can put wrap Dogecoin on the uh, Ren VBM. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, you can put Dogecoin on there so you can get it. I may get back into it. But I think, and that's why I probably should is because what I'm saying is that it's a certain type of investor um, personality that really, you know, understands crypto really well that's invested in dogecoin like you know these and people aren't a certain just, investor there's a certain investor people who don't know anything about dogecoin and yeah <laughs> and it, it's such a who like dogecoin you and know, it so. sucks yeah so so you get i like the person yeah you it, it's it's just got a great um great community great support I, I so i think it's one of the best indicators and i should get back into dogecoin no doubt and Dogecoin to me is like, Dogecoin is one of those indicators where you're like, yo, like normal, I feel like, yeah, there's all this institutional stuff going on and yeah, there's all this tether FUD and all this stuff, but things like institutions are not buying Dogecoin. Like, bro, believe me, they will. You know, they will, they (laughs) they will, you know, cause the people are buying it and the people are saying, yo, we like this coin. 
You know what I mean? It'll be the best. It'll be the best marketing you could fucking ever imagine. Is once these because they're always going to try to be trendy, right? Hook Nike right. or any of these corporations, right. and if they say, "Hey, we just put Dogecoin," I'm telling you, they're gonna have the, they're gonna have the most dedicated fan base ever because they know that. Like, so any any institution that invests in Dogecoin will will definitely cement itself in crypto, like you know, fan. You no, know, it's gonna it's gonna take a while. It's gonna be just like how Bitcoin was. Like right now, it's like you think I'm gonna invest in something like Doge dogecoin or even something like uh like right now they're still barely on like hey let's look at ethereum you know what i'm saying but it's just like in the beginning they were like you think i'm gonna invest in something like bitcoin so it just it's the whole trickle down effect when they learn about bitcoin they'll learn about these other coins and then they're gonna oh you think i should invest in something like this right now we're moving into the market where people are just asking their friends this is something that i actually thought about today this is damn this is about to leak some shit (laughs) something that i was thinking about today but it's like you know a lot of people are gonna be like in this moment oh good thing never mind it just slipped my mind never mind (laughs) yeah no we're gonna we're actually gonna start recording uh uh, either a whole nother podcast or um It'll be easy if we just hold a, hold a whole nother one. So I have to chop it yeah, up. Anyways. No, no, I remember. I'll, I'll leak it. I remember. Because I was saying, look, one, one thing that I do know is this, and this is one thing that I've experienced myself and with a lot of, like, mentees and even people in the comments of my videos, you know, it's like you got a lot of bag holders from 2017. You know, a lot of us, and including me and yourself, you know, like when, you know, we were in the bear market getting it in the mud. So now that things start popping off and everybody's like, oh, what? Bitcoin is 30,000. Is it really going to 400,000? Yo, Roots, what should I do? You know, they're coming to you. They're coming to me. Jay, what's up? What should I do? You think about that. We got a lot of bag holders. You know what I mean? And this is what gave, this is what gave me the idea. We got a lot of bag holders from 2017 who they've been holding different things. Verge, they've been holding Verge. You know what I mean? They've been holding, you know, far, like, what is it? Uh nice nice coin and you know prime coin and a lot of these coins that just from like the bull run of 2015 you know and when their friends come and say what should i buy what you think they're gonna shill them their bags of course (laughs) you know what i'm saying everybody's in it like let's be real though everybody's gonna shill their bags because we wouldn't have our bags if we didn't if we didn't want to shill them you know what I mean? Yeah, that's why I'm, I disagree with people asking other people what the, what, should, what they should buy. I understand, it, mm-hmm. but that's why I disagree with it. Because you, it's like asking a good asking a car salesman, is that a good car to buy? Like, right. what do you think they're gonna say? You know, and right. that could really lead always, you lead you. That's, you, that's you know. what I always tell people. Like, if I tell you that I, about a coin, I'm literally telling you why I like it. People be like, oh, why don't you tell me like the technical side? Go look at the technical side yourself and see if you like it. I'm telling you why I like it. You know what I mean? You got to go and do your own research and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I definitely feel you on that. Like, it's not really cool to just be like, yo, what should I buy? And then, okay, cool. I'm going to buy it. You know, always ask people what you should like. If you come to me, ask me what you should research. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. And we got to, uh, we, we got to learn how to ask what questions to ask, you know, mm-hmm. We got to learn what questions to ask. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, Yarn is up to 24000 right now. Where'd the market cap get to? I think Yarn can get over a billion for sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't want to be twenty five. We're we're, we're 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 talking about value, okay? You know, we're I'm talking value, yeah. let, like let's talk about value. Nothing says value than putting your money in one place and having other people do or a robot or a computer do the work for you to make you more money. Right now, your finance is that it's a decentralized money robot. And right. as you see, you, m- people just cannot keep up. Very few people can even keep up. I mean, no one can keep up. That's why you have so many people creating so many different strategies, right? Every, you know, so the value of what urine finance is going to bring to mm-hmm. the world 
is going to be absolutely into and what i like to be about able to... too is that like they're not being stingy with me they're saying hey look we're not silly we're building something dope over here you're building something dope over there join our ecosystem let's let's get it popping you know what i mean yeah let's make so, this and so change. yeah and it's just a level of sophistication that i i completely respect like it's the it, that uh of urine finance right like through, through the you know um and so there's so yeah you really got to understand the vibe of the community and the way you got to do that is you got to show up in the discord you got to kind of attend some governance meetings and some governance calls you really got to you know like sitting behind a computer and just like there's other people out there that share the same ideas and passions and interests and like they have more skills than you like just learn, like you just come out, come with the place of something to bring to the table. Other than your, than your crypto gossip, I made a video, of, you know, everybody's got an opinion, but what can you actually bring to the table of value that other people around the world can, that you can contribute. If you like a coin, learned how to contribute to the coin. Exactly. There's things you can do to actually further the marketing, the investment, the strategy, the, it doesn't matter, man. You can, you, you know what I'm saying? So there's not a coin that I'm investing in that I don't, am not really a part of the community. Like I'm a part of the community. I'm asking questions. I'm a regular. Let me just I'm say something in- about that. When you get a part of a community, because honestly, like I kind of stepped a lot away from a lot of communities because the some of the community, like go on the Discord community. Discord community usually really cares. You know what I mean? You go yeah. on the Telegram community, or the Twitter community, you usually get a lot of people just complaining that they're not rich yet. You know what I mean? So oh, go, yeah. I mean, go on the Discord community. That was a lot better. And participate through Discord and through, like, you know, what they got going on there and figure out how to get, like, in contact with them directly. So. We're gonna wrap it up today because we already leaked too much alpha. You yeah, we gonna call your... this. We gonna call this podcast is Alpha Leak for show. Alpha, alpha Leak, definitely Alpha Leak. So, what you got? What, what goods and services you got? I got the mentorships popping. I'm helping people out with the trading one on one. We gonna go through this bear market, get that trading thing going for anybody who's looking for that. Everything currency, crypto, at Gmail. Um, you know, of course, check out the channel and look out for the merch coming soon. What you got for them, Roots? Uh, I got my own essential oils, fragrance things called Roots and Shine. Uh, check the links on the description for that. I got the crypto mentorships. I'm taking out a pause on that. I actually doing group sessions on Zoom. So hit me up, uh, email me for the, for the rates. Um, yeah, man, I got so many things in the work. That's pretty much, I'm... Uh, one second. For sure. It's all good. All right. Holla at you, guys. Till next time. Peace out, y'all.